Hey, in this video, I'm going to cover how Fractors extract the ncds.dit file from domain controllers. As usual, preface this video with a it's strictly for educational purposes and is meant to serve as study material for cybersecurity courses. So quick overview, the ncds.dit file is a database that stores Active Directory data, including information about the user objects, groups, and group memberships. Importantly, the file also stores the password hashes for all users in the domain, so obviously of high value to a fractor. The NTDS DIT is located in C, Windows NTDS, we'll get into that in a bit, and is the domain control equivalent of the local SAM file. The file is constantly in use by AD, so it will mean that the file is locked, so it cannot simply be copied unless you have elevated privileges. With admin access, you can use um, a tool called ntdsutil.exe to dump the ntds dit file. What's great about that is it's a legitimate Windows tool for AD management. So like I say, great for fractors as they're leveraging living off the land binaries to achieve their goal. So I'll quickly show how you can grab the ntds.dit uh, uh, with admin privs, and then I'll show you how to do it with our admin privileges. So I've got two windows open here. I've got one for my admin privileges. And again, I'm using the Blackfield box from Hack the Box. So I'm using Evil WinRM to connect uh, with the admin account and I've got the password hash there. So hit enter on that. I've quickly got access to the device. I'm just gonna CD back to the root of C and I'm just gonna create a temporary directory And from here, we're going to run this command. So we're running PowerShell. We're running the ntdsu tilde exe tool I've mentioned. We're then running the command ACI NTDS. So that's short for activate instance NTDS. And then we're creating an IFM image and we're gonna dump the contents to the C temp folder. And then we have the, these two queues here, which stand for, I think, quit out of the command once it's run. So if I hit enter on that, and what we can see is this has been run successfully. It's um, created the Active Directory folder in the C temp location and dumped the ntds.dit. And it's also saved the system and um, security hives. And it shows that the IFM media was successfully created in the temp location that we've created. So if we just do ls now, we can see we have two folders. We've got the Active Directory folder and the Registry folder. So again, if I just do ls on this, paste clipboard, we can see we've got the ncds.dit. And if we do the same for the Registry folder, we can see we've got the security and system hives there. So what I'm going to do is just get rid of all this here, because like I say, what I would then do is then dump these and then use secret stumps to pull the uh, hashes. But we'll get onto that in on the next example. So if I just get rid of this. And we're gonna to move to my user tab. So again, rather than using the admin account, we're using the service underscore backup account on the same host. Again, connecting via Evil WinRM. Again, I'm just gonna move back to the location that I've created. So from here, like I mentioned earlier, the ntds.dit file will be in use. So we're unable to copy it if we don't have elevated privileges. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use a tool called Disk Shadow uh, to make a shadow copy of the C drive. And from there, we will then be able to copy the ntds.dit so what we're going to do is we're going to craft a text file that we can feed into this shadow and this will allow us to execute the necessary commands to create our shadow copy. So from here, I'm just going to copy some commands that I've already got written out. Again, I will include these in the um, this video description. So the first command I'm going to run is the echo command and this is basically going to put this command set context persistent no writers into the file dishshadow.txt with the encoding set to ASCII. And then we're going to append the command add volume C. I'm basically giving the C drive the alias of temp and we're going to out this again to the same file. 
And then again, we'll just add in the command create to the same file. And then finally, the last command we are going to use is we're going to expose the C drive, which we've given the alias of temp as the uh, Z drive. Again, same being appended to the dish shadow uh, .txt file. So we'll then run dish shadow.exe against the file we've just created. Hit enter on that. So what it will say normally at the bottom here is that this has been successful. So the shadow copy has, was successfully exposed. However, because I've done a quick run through before creating the video, it's saying the drive letter is already in use. So I'm happy with that. So if I do now CD uh, for the Z drive, I can navigate to that. And what I can then do is navigate to where the ntds.dit file is located. And then I can just use robocopy to copy that to my temp location. And what I will also need to do is grab the system hive as well. So let me just navigate to my temp location. We can see there we've got the ntds.dit, which is great. And if you watched the last video, uh, you should be familiar with this. So we're just grabbing the system hive from the Windows registry. And then we can just download the files to our local server. So we can use secrets dump to obtain the hashes. So to do that on my local device, I'm going to use SMB server to um, set up a share. So here I'm just accessing that share that I've created with the username Fox password Fox. And then I can just copy those files across by using uh, copy ncds.dit and then it will be to this share and then we do the same with the system hive that we will need so we can now disconnect our share I'm just going to clear the screen and if I do ls we can see we've got the ncds file there we've got the system.back and we can then run secrets dump. So again, I'll just tab across here and explain what I'm doing. So we're running secrets dump. We're specifying it's an NTDS. Uh, specify the name of the file. And then we also need to provide the system hive, which I've called system.back. And this is going to be done locally. And then I'm just outputting it to a file called hashes.txt. So if we hit enter on that, and then we want to look at hashes.txt, we can see we've dumped the credentials and the hashes. Uh, without being admin on a box so thanks for watching as usual if you appreciate the channel please subscribe drop a like uh, and as usual with even more content coming soon cheers guys